Hi everybody, it is Brad here, Robin in the house. Also, just a quick video to share with you some tips in how to prepare for Wakatobi. We just spent the last seven days in an amazing paradise here in Indonesia. We're in Seminyak right now. Uh, it's a set of islands called Wakatobi. There's four islands and we booked this trip one day before we departed. So we really didn't prepare for this and we didn't know what to expect. We read everything we could about it literally the night before we departed and then we basically became guinea pigs and we figured it out for ourselves and then we've decided to compile a list of things for anybody out there that wants to get away from the hustle and bustle of Bali. So, <laughs> the first one is um, a poncho. Now carry a poncho with you, super important. It was raining on and off ridiculously, unexpectedly, a little bit like Melbourne weather back home. Um, it could be really, really sunny and hot, and then all of a sudden, a rain cloud comes past and completely drenches you. <laughs> That's Robin. Hey, Robs. Why is it raining? I got drenched so many times. This one had a poncho, so carry a poncho. <laughs> Poncho, and they don't take up much space in your bag, so. Yeah, just a plus, just a poncho, basic. Uh, the next one we've written down is mosquito repellent. Do you want to talk about the mosquito repellent? Well, basically, you just get absolutely nailed by the mozzies on the islands, particularly Hoga Island. Maybe because we were based closer to um, like the foresty areas, but it, it, I mean. We had to constantly cover ourselves with the repellent, so it was really important. The mosquitoes are ridiculous. They're, they're savage, so yeah, yeah, like you need to have repellent like crazy. Like we had two lots of repellent, so make sure you bring that. Next one is sunscreen. Um, obviously, it is super hot. I'm really guilty of not using it enough. This one loves to remind me of how peeled my skin is and Take how. Photos of his neck, the areas he can't see. <laughs> yeah, so sunscreen for your skin. <laughs> It's super hot. It's really, really hot, and I was irresponsible, so I should have been on top of that more. Uh, the next, the reflection of the water as well. You don't think you're getting burnt, but you really. It's very hot. Burnt. It's very hot. The next one we have is dry bags. Uh, really important. We, my drone that I use with all the aerial footage that you saw in previous videos, I use a dry bag to carry my drone in, and the drone. Um, it, I mean anything, it could be a drone, it could be a phone, it could be like maybe a little Ziploc bag that's the next thing on the list, a plastic Ziploc bag and that's great for phones so if you're on in a dugout canoe or if it's raining and you're wearing a poncho make sure you have a dry bag as well um, something that you, you can buy dry yeah, bags. You can buy them different sizes yeah, as well. Yeah, this... the size of yours and the one I was carrying yeah. around was like almost like a little handbag. That's right. The next one, wet wipes. You want me to talk about the wet wipes? Wet wipes. Yes. Sanitary <laughs> toweling or whatever it's called. But basically, wherever you go, you're traveling through airports, um, you're going through toilets, dirty toilets, um, and I guess you want to try and be as hygienic as you possibly can be. Um, and we just found them really useful. Cleaning toilet seats or um, washing your hands after travel, um, particularly when you just eat lunch straight off a boat or an airplane. Um, so yeah, they're just very, very yeah. A lot of places, um, like you're in the village, that have like they don't have soap or anything. You just you have to wash your hands or something and well, wet even, wipes. Even in the Bajo village, we didn't really get the opportunity to shower. You can just you know <laughs> give yourself a bit of a wipe dog with you, exactly. including tissues. Yeah. Next um, one. Because a lot of the time you'll you'll go to public toilets and they they won't have tissues. Um, and particularly when you don't know when gastro, gastro might visit you. That's right. Um, you want to be prepared for that and you mo most likely will get that. I mean, on the island, there was a bug going around, wasn't there? Yep, 30 people. 30 people in the place next to where we were staying had got some sort of bug and they all had gastro. <laughs> all of them, oh. 30. <laughs> That's a lot of people, so anyway, um, 
tissues, like just little tiny hand tissues, like little ones you buy, um, were fantastic and we carried them everywhere with us. Mm. I mean, don't expect that these places have luxury, they have no Western luxuries, no toilet paper on a roll, nothing like that. Um, no sanitary considerations, you have to be, you just have to bring that, all that yourself. So, wet wipes, tissues, plastic bags. I mean, I put this one down, um, all your wet clothes, so they don't get mixed in with your dry clothes. I just had some plastic bags, just so it just keeps, uh, helps to keep things separated. Um, yeah, that's what I use, plastic bags. Uh, next one is power bank and charging block with a USB connection. Um, so, I mean, look, there's no electricity on these islands, except they run a generator, which is usually for like a few hours of the day. So like, you know, from six o'clock till 10.30 p.m. So 6 p.m. till 10.30 p.m. They'll run a generator at Hogar Island, which is where we stayed. And outside those hours, you're probably doing activities anyway. So you probably don't even need a power bank, but I use mine. So I highly recommend it. I've got a 10,000, it's my bag somewhere. I've got a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. You can bring it through the airport, carry on, it's fine. Basic first aid kit. Um, yeah, so we've got here bite cream, cotton wool, disinfectant. I got injured, this one got injured. Like just small injury, like scrapes, scratches. I got like, a, yeah, we got so bitten. We got bitten by stuff. Um, nothing crazy, just the skin. Oh yeah, I got bitten by something and my arm is swollen. Yeah, so this one's arm just yeah. pull out. <laughs> one guy had a piece of wood pierce his foot. Did you hear about that? Mm. Yeah, like it's a piece of... Like, yeah, a piece mm -hmm. of wood just pierced this guy's foot one out, in through one end out the other. I mean, we just had like scrapes and nicks and this and that, but anyway, the bike cream that all these, a basic first aid kit is going to help you. It's just preventative because yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's nothing to come and collect. There's, there, there aren't there's, any hospitals. There's no hospitals, there's, there's no medical clinics. Like, we were like thinking to ourselves, if something happens to us, we're screwed. We're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> we're screwed. Much. Bring your own mask. Oh. This is mandatory. If you're going to Wakatobi, you're either going to be snorkeling or scuba diving or both. The, the ones they supply, usually most diving resorts, you know, they have masks you can hire. They're never good quality. But the ones we found, uh, it was ridiculous. Like, they were, Mine broke. They were shocking. Sorry. So you, mm. need to, you need to bring your own mask, invest in a good mask for snorkeling and scuba diving. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of frustration, a lot of frustration. I brought my own mask, this one didn't, and... I wish I had. Yeah, just kicking us off. That's yeah. right, you gotta do the same thing. Next one is sarong and scarf, and this is for the women mm. watching this. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was very silly. I didn't do a lot of reading up on um, the sort of dress, attire, and etiquette when you're traveling around these islands, and I, I sort of, learn the hard way a little bit but it's really important that um, you bring a sarong in your bag and you actually cover your shoulders and even your legs um, there are a couple of occasions where I felt quite uncomfortable with little boys looking at my skirt that sort of thing he is too he is too what a cheeky shit um, it's quite a strange concept to grasp um, but that's what happens out there and um, as a female particularly I mean even when I'm solo doing my solo traveling around the world it's, it's been quite a big lesson for me but what's really useful is if you just have one in your bag in the airport when I was traveling around I felt a little bit uncomfortable at a certain point and I just covered up and and, and that was helpful so yes. just bear that in mind yeah the sarong and scarf you can I mean, you can, they're pretty lightweight, you can carry them with you everywhere and it's easy to whip out and throw on if you have to. But the little boys looking up this one's dress, that was, I was shocked at that. I wasn't, yeah. I've not seen that. And these guys were like, these little kids, five, six, seven, eight years old, there was like four or five of them, like this one sat down and they literally positioned themselves. Or even just walking. Or just walking. I was just like, walking <laughs> and they were, they were, they were like just like positioning looking. themselves to look. I, that's, and that was one of a couple of incidents. So um, I'll just mention that one, but yeah, just just maybe read up about it a little bit. Um, be careful, look after yourself, you know, particularly if you're a solitary female traveler. 
I had Brad with me, but even sometimes that didn't count. I was there, and they were still looking up the dress, and there's nothing I can do about it because we're remember we're. Whatever it is. We are like on a. We, we, if you saw the previous videos, we stayed at Baja Village. It was isolated from the mainland. You can't get upset or angry because you get speared in the face. Like. <laughs> and also, I mean, it's it's it's. I think it's also a bit of respect for the fact for for the culture that you're walking into. It's a Muslim culture, and I should have done my homework. I should have known that because that is the dress attire. So. It's just making sure you're informed of where, wherever you go in the world to make sure that you, you know that sort of stuff. Next one on the list is Small Torch. This is important because they run generators after hours, as I mentioned before. But yeah, sometimes the generator cuts out. Sometimes you walk in parts of the village where there's no light, there's no street lighting, nothing like that. So if you have a small torch, I actually had a keyring torch literally just fits on my keyring. Um, you can buy small ones like for five bucks, two bucks, LED, that's all I used, super basic, not complicated. Three, you can buy them off eBay for like a dollar. Uh, but yeah, you, you should really bring a torch. Must, must bring a small torch. It's uh, something to, to include. Body wash and hand wash. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to buy that because a lot of these pet places don't provide that. Um, you need some, it's the same as the wipes, but you need some sort of hand sanitizer um, or it's just hygiene reasons. As you're moving around, you have something to clean yourself with and that's not provided. She carries everything. I try to. <laughs> I'm, I'm, be prepared. I'm so bad, I carry nothing. No body <laughs> wash. This is all my body wash. No body wash. <laughs> it's fine. They're pretty bad. Anyway, last one is bring a lot of cash. There are no ATM machines. We should have put this one at the very beginning. It's super important. Yeah. One. We had no idea actually how much money we should have brought because there wasn't much information about Wakatobi, so we just kind of like went with how much did we have? Nine million? Yeah. Eight points? So we had four. It was about eight and a half. So we had about 850, 900 yeah. Australian dollars between us for seven days. That wasn't enough. To be honest with you, we actually only covered half of Wakatobi because A, we didn't have enough money to go all the way down to Tamiya and Bonoko, which is the last two islands in the chain. And secondly, we didn't have enough time because it's so slow to get between the islands, everything's slow yeah. and nothing runs on time. So um, keep that in mind, bring a lot of cash. So maybe double that. Ah, okay, so we're just thinking. Yeah, about maybe double, double that it. and it might be enough to do diving yeah. and... To do the diving, so yeah. diving will add up. Yeah, if you're diving, you need to bring more. Yeah. That's it. If you have any questions, let us know, let me know, and we'll happy, be happy to answer them for you. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, go and check them out. We cover Wakatobi, we cover a couple of islands, we stay in the Bajo village, we take you in, we show you the accommodation. All right, guys. Ciao. Bye.